I really want to talk to you about um, computer-generated plants, right? So, you know, how we, can, how we can produce these things inside a computer, how we can render them, how we can draw them. Uh, and, and you could imagine this be useful for a game, maybe, or for some kind of film or for a movie. Um, but actually, this goes back to the 60s with this guy called Lindenmeyer, and he was a biologist. And he was really interested in modeling the, the growth of filamentous organisms, which, well, you know, I'm not a biologist uh, at all, but um, my, my Wikipedia searching tells me that a filamentous organism is one where, in fact, I've got a picture here, where you have a row of cells and these cells can do different things. They're, they're, they're differentiated in some way, right? But there's no, there's no tissue, there's, there's no filling in. What he thought is that you could represent these things in a computer, right? You could model this growth computationally and by doing that you're kind of formalizing things right you're you're you're, you're making it very clear you know what could happen what can't happen um, and yeah this started as a biological thing right it's a bit like kind of the game of life conway's game of life yeah it's it's very similar it's one of these examples of kind of an emergent property yeah very very similar okay what is an l system so we have some symbols uh, in this case let's say we have a and we have b and these symbols represent cells, right, in, a, in an organism. So for example here, you know, each of these blobs is going to be a symbol, right? And um, the, the particular symbol it is represents some, some, some chemical property of it or some hormone it might have inside of it, some, so, something going on inside this cell. And then we have rules. So let's say A maps to A, B. This means that at every time step, a is going to divide into two cells, and one of these cells is going to be A, the other cell is going to be B. And we can give a rule for B as well. And in this case, I'm just going to say B is converted into an A. You know, these are very simple rules, right? These are just cell division, cell differentiation. But uh, the interesting part is when we actually start drawing this as an organism. So I'm going to say A corresponds to a straight cell, just like a, a cell. There's nothing going on there. And B through some chemical property which this symbol represents is like a curvy cell like that. And then if we had um, an organism say A, B, A, A, B, we can actually draw this out, right? So we've got the straight line from the A and then we have a curvy line from the B and then we have a straight line here from the A and we have another straight line for the A, and finally we have our B here, which is a curvy cell. You know, this is unremarkable in itself, but the interesting part comes when we start applying these rules. We can start from like a seed organism, like, like you say, call it maybe the egg or something, and we're just gonna start with an A here, and then we wanna apply these rules. So for each symbol in our organism, we replace it with what the rules tell us to. So in this case, we just get an A, B. And we can repeat this. The A gives us another A, B, and then this B here gives us an A. I can repeat this again, this A, gives us an A, B. This B gives us an A, and this final A gives us an A and a B. I'll do it one more time. So, you know, here's our organism, and this is grown naturally from this seed according to our rules. And if I draw this out again, and here's our organism. You're probably gonna say this doesn't look much like a plant, and this isn't a plant actually. This is one of Lindenmeyer's original L systems for modeling algae actually. So this is meant to represent an algae very similar to this one here which is a, a filamentous algae. So, uh, okay, later on, Lindenmeyer became much more interested in plants. So he was speaking to some of his botanist friends and they thought, well, you know, this is all well and good, but actually this could map quite nicely into plants as well. So here's a new L system. So we have five symbols. We have A, B, C, D, and K. And then we have four rules. So A goes to C, B, C, B goes to D, A, D, C goes to K, and D goes to A. And we want to start off with just a single A, and that's going to represent the C. So if I start with an A, we're then going to get a C, B, C. We're going to get the C maps to a K. The B gives us a D, A, D. And then the final C gives us a K. Since there's no rule for the K, this just remains unchanged. This D gives us a final A. This A gives us another C, B, C. This D here gives us an A. And this K... Uh, is there's no rule, so it just stays the same. And actually something we can see happening is that uh, this is symmetrical. And, you know, we can kind of see by the rule that this is always going to be symmetrical, which actually saves some time in the, in the calculating this. So I can, as soon as I get to the midpoint, I can just copy it over. I'm gonna do a few more of these. Okay, here we go. So we have some, we have some organisms here. These each represent an organism. 
in varying growth stages. And now I'm going to tell you how to draw them. We have some rules on how we draw these things. So I'm going to tell you that the A and the B both correspond to a sharp point, so like this. The C and the D correspond to like a shallow curve, that kind of thing. Um, and a K corresponds to kind of like a deeper curve, like that kind of thing. And if we have more Ks, then the curve is deeper. So, so what I can actually do now is start drawing these things out. So I'll use a green for this one. My A gives me this green point here, my CBC. So I start off with a curve and then a point at the top and then another curve coming down the side. Um, so I can try and label this, so C and then we have a B at the top and then a C here. And then my next one here, I start with this big scoop shape uh, and then I get a kind of lobe and then a point at the top with the A and then it's symmetrical again. So K, K, D, D, A at the top. I can draw out the next one. Now I'm gonna draw the next one. And this B is another point. And now we've reached the halfway point so I can actually just copy over this side again. Okay. Looks like holly. Looks like holly. It does look like holly. You'll see it even looks more like holly next time. And there we go. I mean, like, you know, that's holly, right? Yeah, yeah. Or a gothic cross. Or a gothic cross. <laughs> a gothic cross curve. I'll just fill in these letters here. Here we go. I mean, so this is, this is something which Lyndon Meyer was really interested in early on, is modelling leaves. But it's well known in biology, apparently. Again, I'm not a biologist, but apparently it's a well known fact that leaves actually form from the margin, so from the outside of them. And so he said that um, if you can model how these cells kind of grow on the outside of the leaf, you can model very well how how the leaf itself grows. But there's another really cool thing here. Maybe you can see by looking at the symbol at the top, maybe you can see by looking at the pictures. But actually, if I look at, say, this sequence here, this is exactly the same sequence as this sequence here, okay? And it's also exactly the same sequence as, oh, it's kind of split over the line here, but we start here, and uh, we continue over to here. And furthermore, this sequence here in the middle is exactly the same sequence as this sequence. And in general, this is the case, right? So if I wanna say, call, this is sequence one, S1. This is S2, S3, S4, five, and so on. We can say in general that Sn equals a K, so these Ks on either side, followed by S of N minus three, so that corresponds to the S4 here, followed by S of N minus two, followed by S of N minus three again, followed by another K. And um, this really nicely represents this kind of recursive nature of these leaves. And actually you can see this in the picture as well. So if I look at this leaf in the bottom, so this is S7, uh, then I can actually circle this part here. And um, you can see that this is exactly the same as this one here. Uh, which is a bit hidden within, within the jumble of S, but this is just translated over. And interestingly, we can also see that this top um, kind of section is exactly the same as this one here. And uh, yeah, this is the case in general, right? So um, this is a very, very simple way of generating recursive leaves, which is pretty cool. Later on, Lyndon Meyer and, um, and his friends became a lot more interested in modeling entire plants rather than just organs of the plants. Um, and so, the problem here is you have branching, right? So how do you represent branching in a, in a, in a, in a single dimensional array? And um, here's an L system which does represent branching. The idea is that X and Y both just are a stem. They're part of a stem, right? That's just a line. Plus and minus are rotation. So these kind of say, move the next stem a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Um, and then you have these square brackets. So these square brackets actually represent um, a branch, right? So anything inside of these happens in its own world. You can think of it happening in parallel. And this lets us represent uh, proper like trees and, and, and plants and things like that. So if I start off with Y, and then uh, this becomes very quickly quite large. So this becomes X, open square bracket, minus Y, close square bracket, open square bracket, plus y. Um, and then we can do the same process again. So we get x, x, bracket, minus, and then we get the whole y part again. So x, bracket, minus y, bracket, plus y, close bracket, bracket, plus x, bracket, minus y. I don't want to make a mistake here because I'm the 
whole plant's going to look off. I'm not going to go any further because this is getting absolutely massive already, but um, you can see kind of where this is going to go, maybe. If I draw these out in the exact way that I've, I've set forth here, the Y is going to give me just a line. So this is Y. Uh, this is like a very, maybe, maybe this is just the beginnings of a plant, right? So this is, it's just sprouted up from the soil. And then here, the X and the Y both have the same property visually. So they're both just lines. So here's my X. Um, and then we have two branches, right? So this branch here um, happens independently to this branch here. So I'll first do the left branch. Um, and this says minus, which means the next thing is rotated to the left. And then I have another branch, uh, another stem here. So this is my Y. And then since this is independent, that means I can now go back here and do the other branch. So this is going to be rotate to the right and then do a stem. So that's a Y. And I'll do the next one as well. So we have two X's to start off with. That's X, X. And then I have a branch at the left uh, with a rotation. So, uh, and then X. So here's my X. And then I have two more branches, right? And then these happen independently once again. So. I'll do this branch first. So I have a minus and then a Y. Y. And then I'll do this branch here. And then this is going to be pointing upwards. Um, that's the end of this branch. Then that's the end of this whole branch altogether. So now I can start on this branch. Uh, and this is actually exactly the same thing, except from it starts with a right rotation and then a left rotation. So I can actually take a bit of a shorthand and just fill that in. So. Are they always symmetrical, these, or is it just the way the rules work? They're not always symmetrical, actually. So you can see the thing with these rules is that um, they are very symmetrical looking rules. So, so we, when we, whenever we copy a Y, we have one on both sides. But if, for example, you did something slightly left on each branch, then you're going to get very different results. But OK, you, we can maybe see these as very primitive plants, right? There's some branching going on. There's some, some kind of stem and some kind of maybe even a canopy. Maybe it's just like a tree. Uh, but I'm not going to go any further by hand because I can't draw anything bigger than that. Uh, so, so what I've done is I've written a little Python script, which I'll share the code to that uh, somewhere in the description probably, um, which can render these for me uh, much faster than I could do it by hand. So you can see currently this is just um, drawn out this single line from the first one. But if I press enter, it's going to draw the next one. And um, you can see that it kind of comes back and it does these branches separately just as I was drawing it by hand. Um, I can press enter to go to the next one again. And here we go, here's exactly the one I've just drawn here. But the nice thing is that now I can go to much deeper ones here, right? So I can go to the next one. And um, you can see there's a lot of kind of teleporting around. And um, behind the scenes, what these brackets are actually doing is they're keeping track of the position we're at before drawing. And then when we get to the close bracket, we kind of recall this and, and teleport back to that position to continue with that branch. Um, so I actually have a fast mode implemented here because um, it's very slow otherwise. So here we go, here's the next one, and here's the next one. And, and you know, this just gets bigger. This is, this is really infinite growth here, but we can get some, some very tree-like things. Right? You know, this, this looks like a tree. There's a, you know, you've got a canopy, you've got, you've got branches, you've got a big trunk in the middle. So yeah, it's just another really nice example of kind of how you can get this, this amazingly complicated behavior from really the simplest rules. You know, they're just two, two very short rules here. So just to kind of hammer that home, I really want to show you uh, one which I've um, spent a little while making earlier with some, with some extra little features for, uh, to make it a bit more realistic. So yeah, here are some rules I made earlier. These are a little bit more complicated than what we've seen so far, but yeah, there's nothing too different going on. Again, it starts off with a very, very tiny bud at the bottom. I can press enter a few times and you can see this is starting to grow. We've got some white flowers on top. We have some, some, some branches which we're starting to see. Um, I can do this a few more times. And um, this is actually making some really cool patterns. Uh, you know, this is looking a bit more realistic and I'll, uh, I'll tell you why in a second. But um, if I let that grow kind of to fill the screen, um, here we go, we have, we have a really nice picture of a plant. Does this remind you of anything? So there is actually some randomization going on here. So uh, you can see the stems are kind of curving over to one side. There's a bit of um, unevenness. And that's just to make it look a bit more realistic. It kind of simulates maybe there's some wind going on in the background. Uh, another interesting thing, actually, is that I'm simulating tropism here. So, so actually, these, these stems are trying to go towards 60 degrees. So this is actually supposed to be cow parsley. It's very common here in England. Cow parsley. And hello, pretty close. <laughs> close as I could get. Can I ask how you did the color, the white? Yeah, so whenever this program draws an F or a G, what it does actually is it draws the stem as usual and then it just draws a little dot at the top. Uh, and that's all it takes. Um, so it really comes back to this idea of, uh, you know, you can, you can encode some very, very complex behavior just, um, just in these symbols, really. 
So these leaves actually come from this paper which, uh, which Lyndon Meyer wrote uh, in 1974, so a very, very long time ago. And this is a really cool paper, but... Uh, no yeah. other station will begin or continue its own transmission. And this is really is the core, the heart,